Hey guys, this is the Duda 2, and today I'm going to do a book review. And that rhymes, so I'd, uh, I'd like some credit for that. Um, the book I'm going to do today is one of the oldest English translations of a book of Go. Uh, it's called The Game of Go, The National Game of Japan by Arthur Smith. Um, little tip, uh, we have a chain of bookstores called... Uh, Bradley's, Bradley's Bookstore. It's kind of a discount bookstore. Um, it's at, uh, at the mall. Uh, they're a chain and they're in a couple malls. You can get this book for four bucks at this bookstore. I've seen it at a couple bookstores, uh, a couple uh, Bradley's bookstores. So, uh, four bucks, you can't beat it, regular price, 15. Okay, it's a piece of history, piece of go history here. Um, I was very excited to find it. Um, Arthur Smith uh, wrote this book in 1908. Um, it was reprinted, obviously this isn't the original, but um, the reprint uh, ha has the original diagrams in it uh, and the original wording. They did this on purpose to show if you could see the old style diagrams. Uh, it's not the same lettering system as is used today. Uh, the only letter missing is I. So it goes 1 through 19 and A through T. Okay, the only reason they got rid of I was because it kind of looked like the number one. Um, this book is just an awesome, uh, an awesome book. Uh, it's got its pros and cons, but let's, uh, let's check it out. Um, in the table of contents, let's see, is there a table of contents? book here. Yeah. You have introduction, history, uh, description of the board and stones, roles of play, methods of play and terminology, then you have illustrative games, Joseki and openings, end game, and you have problems. Um, this has many pages on the history. Um, like 18 pages of nothing but history of the game. Going all the way back uh, telling the story about how the emperor of China uh, invented it and how it came to Japan and Korea. Uh, a lot of great history here. Um, all the way up till, um, I guess the, the history goes all the way up to around the 18, you know, 1880 um, and it was told to him he, um, he was a friend of uh, a couple really prominent uh, Japanese Go masters and he got his information from them. So this comes straight from the masters of Go in the late 1900s. So uh, everything as far as I'm concerned is trustworthy as any Go book uh, can be. Um, then you have the description of the stones and board which is awesome uh, because it talks about the different boards used. It talks about uh, in Korea um, the stone used, uh, talks about kaya and uh, you know cedar, different types of boards. It talks about uh, theories behind the shape of the legs, um, theories behind the square in the center of a Japanese gobon. If you have any idea what that is, check that out. Um, you know, it talks about the different theories, of, and evidently he got these from Japanese go masters back in the late 1900s. So it's really interesting to see. Uh, what people thought back then as opposed to what people think now. Um, the rules, uh, he, he makes a comparison to chess because this is pretty much the only western game around uh, that could be comparable to Go at the time. Um, and as you can see that the, the diagrams are definitely a bit dated. They're, they're nowhere near as uh, sophisticated and nice looking as we have today with uh, grays and, and numbers on the stones. Um, part of the, uh, I, I guess, part of the issue with the book that I'll, I'll talk about at the end is uh, the diagrams. They had, this is all um, printed, uh, you know, the, the best they could do at the time. Uh, it would have been very difficult for them, I'm guessing, to put um, numbers on each of the stones. So what they do is they have a corresponding page. I'll show you here, where they'll uh, 
I mean, there are illustrations in the book with numbers on the stones, but um, the author thought it very difficult to follow like this. Uh, and an example, as you could see why, is, I mean, just look at that. I mean, that is just a mess. It's like a really ugly looking kifu. Um, so, this would be under the illustrative game section. But uh, when you get into the Joseki section, um, this would be an example. You have A, B, C, and D, right? So this, these would be Josekis. And so what they would do is they would show you the number. It would say like A, um, white 1, black 2. And it says white 1 is at R14, black 2 is at N17. So you could see how this could be very, very difficult to follow unless you have a board with all the letters and numbers as he has, which I don't think anybody does. So um, it is difficult. However, if you're able to follow through, um, like an example of Joseki of, of how it reads, it says, White 1, Kogema, which is 017, and then it says Black 2, 016, Tsukite, and then N16 would be White 3, and you go through, and then when it goes to R, uh, to 14, it says R10, Black Abandoned Stone at R17 in order to get territory. An amateur might be tempted to play number 14 at R18, but in this case, White could spoil Black's chance to get a space on the right side of the board. Um, this is type, the very difficult type of, I, I guess, the biggest issue with the book is the way that it's set up in such an old style. Uh, it would take even more study to learn these Josekis than it would take from a regular Joseki book. Um, that being said, the book has no modern, uh, I guess what you would consider modern Joseki, uh, modern openings. Uh, as the stuff he got from this book, I b believe uh, he got like 1880 or 1890 so it's got a great history book um, it's one of the few books in English that have really old Josekian openings in it uh, not in a format of like an encyclopedia or dictionary or something like that um, and then um, I guess the best the best part is it has beginners problems here and uh, being it's one of the first books in English, I'm guessing it's probably the first English book that has the style that we're used to today. Like it says, A, white to play, B, black's move, or A, black's move, C, white's move, D, black's move, and you're supposed to pick, uh, you know, the best move for it. And, you know, you would have to do it in such a form as it would be like Q16 or something like that. And then it would explain when you go through and it shows uh, actually a very complicated way it shows the group of moves that you need to play in order to come up with the result that you like so um, you know I mean just look at the, the denseness I mean this guy put a lot of work in this book but I mean very difficult to follow and you're supposed to follow these uh, and, that, and that that's from this diagram right here so um, book's got its pros and its cons. Uh, it's got the best history I've ever read in an English go book. Very detailed. The best detailed writings. It's like a, it's like a, a, a huge many sections, much clicking from Sensei's library online, which is a, an internet website loaded with go information. A lot of that information is taken from this book. A lot of the stuff I've read online comes directly from this book, especially with uh, stone descriptions and such. So, uh, you know, you want to get it from the source, this is the way to go. Pros is that it covers everything. It, it, it covers everything uh, on, the gate, on the game of Go. It even talks about the masters of the time. It talks about Chinese and Korean players uh, coming over and playing games with Japan. Uh, and it's a really interesting reading. Um, some of the terms are a bit dated, uh, as you can imagine. And some of the spelling of the Japanese uh, terms such as uh, the Knight's Move, Kema, and um, 
you know, some different uh, Japanese terms are spelt, I'm guessing in like you know, older English style or something like that. But uh, other than that, I highly recommend it for four bucks at the uh, Bradley's bookstore. Uh, even a better deal. So, um, it's a book review. I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, it's an excellent book. I highly recommend it for everybody. And uh, if, if, if you're looking for a study book, it's probably not the best uh, way to study. But you could do it. And uh, the book really has everything. And if you're starting out in Go, this would definitely be the way to, to do it. You guys have a good day. Sorry about the late video. I'll, uh, I'll keep them coming. Later.